Good morning, and just echo again, happy Father's Day uh, to all the dads out there joining us. Um, hope you have a great day uh, being celebrated today and, and get a, take a nap this afternoon, maybe, and uh, that'd be good. But I just want to welcome you into worship here this morning at Perrysburg First, and uh, I also want to say it was really good to see so many of you uh, last weekend at our parking lot worship. And it was just a great morning, a beautiful day, a little windy, but that was okay. We made that work. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the service. I know I really did. I got to meet a few more people out that we uh, have not had a chance to meet yet, so that was really wonderful. I also want to let you know we are planning another parking lot worship. We're looking at a date or a couple dates in July, uh, so just kind of stay posted. We'll get some more information out to you very soon on when that will happen and hope to see you again another Sunday we can worship together as we try to get ready, get over the COVID-19 thing and actually be back together here in the sanctuary with all of you here on a Sunday morning. That would be fantastic. Can't wait for that to happen. Also want to say, I uh, was following along on Facebook. Really appreciate seeing all the comments and encourage you to do that throughout the service. Let us know you're here. Say hello. We love seeing you there and love hearing from you during the service, so appreciate you taking the time to do that. But I'm just really glad that you joined us uh, here this morning uh, for worship at Perrysburg First. And uh, we've been in a series, we started the 1st of June that we called Therefore. It's based out of Romans chapter 12. That's what we've been using. We've been taking some time to look at really the way the Apostle Paul encourages us to respond to God's mercy, to God's grace that's expressed to us really through the life, through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. And then even more than that, we're looking at the life that um, God offers to us when we place our faith in Jesus, when we give him our life in that way. And so the first week we talked about what our reasonable response is, uh, giving the working of God's mercy, God's compassion in our life, and really the difference that this makes for us, uh, that the, his grace makes for us in the way that we choose to live. And we looked at what Paul said. Paul said, we're to offer our lives as a living sacrifice. And what that means is we're giving our life to God to use in the way that he wants to use it. So we're just giving ourselves to him to be used in whatever way he decides to use us in whatever moment he calls us to. And so then last week, uh, we were talking about the second part of that verse and uh, our calling as Christians to not be conformed to the patterns of living that's being offered to us by the world. In fact, Paul said, instead of that, we're called to be transformed, transformed in our thoughts, in our attitudes, in our actions, as we renew our minds, as we set our thinking on the things of God and the things that he values in his kingdom. Because God came to bring a kingdom. He said that. Jesus said that he came to declare God's kingdom, to bring usher in God's kingdom. So we put our faith and our value in that kingdom, not in the kingdoms of the world, but in the kingdom that God is bringing about. And Paul said, as we order our lives in this way, that, we don't, uh, be, that we're not conformed to the patterns of this world, but we're renewed by the transforming of our mind, setting our thinking, as that happens, then we're able to test and approve, to discern, he says, to live into God's desire for us. And Paul says, that desire, God's will, is good. It's pleasing. It's perfect for us. So it's a great word to us to open up this series. And so this week we're going to continue. We're going to look at Paul's encouragement to us in verses 3 to 5. We're going to talk about humility and this idea of thinking rightly about ourselves. Not too highly, right? We don't think too highly, but also not too lowly of ourselves. And that matters because it impacts the way we live out our faith, the way we serve others, the way we serve God, and the way we understand ourselves. And then next week, we're excited because Pastor Andrea is going to finish up the series. She's looking at verses 6 through 8, and so we're excited to get a word from her next week. Uh, I know many of you love Andrea and the word that she brought uh, during all the time, and so we're excited to have Andrea back preaching next weekend. And I think she's excited as well to be preaching again. She says yes, so we're excited about that. But let me pray, and then we'll jump in the passage today. Let's pray together. So God, we thank you today 
um, for your presence here with us. God, for your desire to be with us, to share this time with us, to speak to us, to make yourself known to us, to open up your words that we can hear your heart for us today. So we pray, come Holy Spirit, awaken us to your presence, awaken us to the word that you have for us today. Help us to receive it with an open heart, with an open mind, and to walk in boldness of faith in a way of responding to what it is you say to us today. So we just give you the glory now for what you're going to do in this time. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And all of his people said, amen. If you have your Bible, I hope you have your Bible at home. Turn to Romans chapter 12. And uh, I just want to encourage you. I like to do this every once in a while. As we're reading scripture, as we're talking through it, Feel free to underline, to circle, to make notes in your margin. You know, I look at my page and it's all marked up of different things that I've learned and different ways God's kind of revealed himself to me as I've been reading at different times. And so do that. It's okay to write in your Bible if no one's told you that before. Feel free to underline, circle, write in the margins, make notes, all those things as we're going along. And I do hope that you've been reading along with us uh, through the book of Romans these last couple weeks, reflecting on what words Paul has for us, kind of the deep theology he shares, that amazing richness that you find all through Romans. I hope you've been doing that along with us uh, this month and continue to do that this next week, uh, week and a half. This is Romans 12. I'm going to read all of it, 1 through 8 again today uh, in our time together. So let's read. Paul says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing to God. This is true worship. He said, this this is worship. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace of Given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each of you. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. Paul says, if your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with the faith, uh, excuse me, in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. So again, today, I, I want to focus on verses 3 to 5. When you look back at verse 3, you see this, that Paul starts by saying, for by the grace given me, I say to all of you, don't think more highly of yourself than, that, than you should. Now, If you didn't know this about Paul, Paul was a guy that had quite the resume. If anyone had reason to think highly of himself and could boast about his credentials, his list of credentials, it was Paul. If you want an idea of this list of credentials, look at Philippians. Paul talks about it uh, in the letter that he was writing to the church at Philippi. This is verse uh, 4 through 6 I'm going to read right now. But Paul says this. He says, if others think they have reason to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, he says, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. And so for a Jewish man, Paul is saying this. He said, I had it all. He said, I'm a Rhodes Scholar. I was a Rhodes Scholar. I had a PhD in all things Jewish. It's from the right bloodline. Look at his pedigree. 
He held a place of prominence in the church. He was a Pharisee. Paul was religious to a T. And few people could claim the resume that Paul claimed. Here's a guy. He had a lot to his credit to think highly of himself according to the things that the world holds in value. The world's accounting system where performance, where status, where all these things count. You could say Paul was the dude, right? He had it all. And Pastor Jody just read this for us. But then something happened to Paul. Paul had an encounter with Jesus. And the grace of God came and it collided with his life. I like to say it interrupted his life. And it literally opened his eyes to what really matters. So now Paul could say with the utmost honesty and sincerity and humbleness, the rest of this passage in Philippians, verse 7 through 9, Paul says, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. You see, what is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Paul says, I consider them garbage. <laughs> and the word literally means waste thrown to the dogs. Dung even. Garbage. Worthless, he says. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ, be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, something that he earned by his own effort, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God solely on the basis of faith. And for Paul, all that mattered was knowing Jesus and gaining all that Jesus has to offer. He had clearly come to a place of faith in his life where he realized all of those past accomplishments that he had were of little value without Jesus. All those things that he had put his worth into, that he found his identity in, now it didn't rest in that anymore. It rested solely on his faith in Christ. If he was going to boast, he was going to boast about Jesus. This is from Galatians 6, 14. Again, Paul writing, he says, As for me, I never boast about anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because of him, my interest in this world, it's been crucified. And the world's interest in me has also died. Paul experienced God's grace, and it radically changed his life. Radically changed his life. And that's the thing about grace, isn't it? It's a humbling gift. There's nothing we can do to earn it. God offers it freely. All we can do is receive it. And friends, when we rightly understand this gift of grace, it sets us free. It sets us free. And we see that because Paul's focus shifted from the pursuit of status, of social standing, of all these things he, he was strove for so hard to get and accomplish. He said, I consider them garbage. And his focus shifted solely to the pursuit of Jesus. It was the fruit of humility in his life. So take a moment. Just pause. Take a moment. I want to ask you, where may you be putting your faith? Or let me say this again. Where may you be putting faith in your accomplishments and credentials over Jesus? Is there something in your life that you're giving such a high value that you're finding your worth in as a person that's taking the place of Jesus in your life. Is that where you're looking to find your worth, to find your value, your identity as a person? 
What is that for you? You know, one thing Paul is clear about, his worth as a person did not come from the things that the world holds in high value, the, wor- the things that the world has value about. He had all of those. He shared that. He had all those at one time. But he came to understand his worth and identity in relationship to God is really what mattered most. And once that truth came to be the defining narrative for his life, he was then set free to serve others, to live freely and fully. Oftentimes in his letters, he calls himself a servant, a slave even. And he was even later thrown in prison because he was able to be secure in his place before God so he didn't have to hold on to his life that tightly anymore. Paul came to possess this deeply held, humble understanding of himself and that set him free to do great things for his Father in the kingdom of heaven. He left behind the things that he once held in high value in order to pursue something greater. And when we do that with our lives, it doesn't always make sense to others in relation to what the world has taught us to value. You know, I remember uh, this was back 20 years ago now. It's amazing how time flies. It doesn't seem that long ago. But 20 years ago when I first felt God speaking into my life, calling me um, out of my first career into another career, into, into vocational, full-time vocational ministry, I remember when I told my parents I was going to leave my career as an engineer and go to seminary and become a pastor. Now, they had a hard time at first understanding why. Um, I think they were proud of what I had accomplished in my life. And I remember them. I think this was my mom. One time I was at their house, and we were talking about this. And she said to me, and you can't call me this, but she was my mom, so she can. She said, Jimmy? <laughs> She said, why would you throw away everything that you've worked so hard for? And, you know, career-wise, she had an argument. At that time, I I had two degrees in engineering, uh, a a bachelor's and a master's. I was a licensed professional surveyor in the state of Ohio, a licensed professional engineer. Uh, I had a job with some status as a city engineer. I was fairly well-known in our community. A lot of people knew who I was. But the thing is this, for me, I really didn't see it as throwing something away, of throwing anything away. It's not that I didn't value those things I'd accomplished. I I did, I worked hard for them. But here's the thing, I just decided to pursue something of even greater value. I felt was even greater value. And I say that, I'm not saying that you have to leave your job, leave your career. Uh, That's not what I'm saying. It's a matter, though, of what you value most in your life and where you find your identity, where that rests. So are you an engineer that happens to be a Christian? Or are you a Jesus follower that works as an engineer? You know, are you a doctor that just happens to be someone that has a Christian faith? Or are you passionate about Jesus and you serve others by living out your medical career? Could hold for any teacher, lawyer, professor. You know, let's be honest. You could be a garbage collector. But who are you first? And how are you living that out? How's God calling you to live that out in response. Where is your identity first and foremost? How do you identify yourself when someone asks you? Because when we boil it all down, what Paul's talking about here, think of yourself with sober judgment. It's a command to think accurately about yourself. As Paul says, not too highly, but also not too lowly. It's about a right understanding. Just look at that text again. Paul says, in accordance with the faith that God has distributed to each one of us. I mean, it all comes from God anyway, right? It's not ours to brag about. Humility is a gift. It's the freedom to stop trying to be what we're not or pretending to be more than we are 
and deciding to let God define our worth and what gives value to our lives. Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Do you hear that? Humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Leave it to C.S. Lewis to say something profound like that, right? That's who said that. Again, we're not talking uh, about thinking right, excuse me, again, we are talking about thinking rightly about ourselves. That, that's what we're talking about. And this is why it's important. Sober judgment, thinking accurately, rightly about yourself. It's because if you think too highly of yourself, you may not see your need for other people. And you may have a hard time of loving others. But then on the other hand, if you think too lowly of yourself, you may not feel worthy to allow yourself to be loved by other people. As a follower of Jesus, we need to love and be loved. We need to to know and be known. We need to serve and be served. But if we learn to think accurately of ourselves in relationship to God, then we're set free to receive love and to give love in the way that God designed. And so the reason that Paul encourages us to think of ourselves with a right of understanding what he calls sober judgment, it has to do with the end of verse 5, where Paul says this. He says, each member belongs to all the others. You see, we belong to one another. And when a person rightly understands their identity and relationship to God, they're set free to serve others without regard for themselves. Nothing's too far above or too far beneath us to do in the service of others. Humble service becomes a way of life. We serve out of love, right? Not out of obligation, not as, as a way to gain the approval of other people, not as a way to feel good or feel better about ourselves but we serve out of love. You see, our big problem comes when we mistake our worth as a person with our performance of a job, maybe our place within a relationship, our position on a team, or fill in the blank for whatever that is for you. When our identity is linked up with our performance, Our performance becomes a way of validating ourselves, which makes everything we do, no matter how noble it may appear, but it's a backdoor way of serving ourselves and just trying to maintain and hold our image, this image that we're trying to project. But I want you to hear this today. If you hear nothing else, hear this. Your worth as a person does not come from the things that the world values and encourages you to pursue. Your worth comes from Jesus and the gift of faith that God has granted to you. If you are a follower of Jesus, Scripture says you are a child of God. That's who you are. That's who you are. Understanding and knowing your identity and worth in relationship to God will set you free to live with sober judgment and to love and serve others for their sake and not your own. So I just want to take a moment here at the end of the message today. I want to share with you why I wanted us to spend this time reflecting together on Romans chapter 12. You see, first and foremost, my hope was this that you would be encouraged in your faith. And wherever you are on that journey, wherever you may be on that journey, maybe you're a new believer and this is a new thing to you following Jesus, so you're early on. Maybe it's 40 years for you that you've been a Christian. Wherever you are on that journey of faith, my hope for you is that you are encouraged to take the next step of faith in your journey to Jesus, whatever that looks like for you allowing him to lead you each and every day. Because as long as you're breathing, as long as there is breath in your lungs, 
you still have more room to grow. There's still more that you can learn about God and following him. He's not done with you yet. I also hope, I also have been praying that this series will help deepen your understanding, deepen your experience of the life that God wants to share with you. And for you to understand more fully what that looks like as the Holy Spirit brings to life that faith within you, within each of us. Friends, as, as we get to know each other better, I think you're going to find that one thing I'm very passionate about is coming alongside people and helping them to grow and develop in their faith. You see, I get excited. I get so excited when I see people taking steps of faith, when I see them moving closer to God, deepening their trust in God, growing in their love for him, growing in their love for other people. Basically, what I'm talking about is growing as disciples. This is, that's what discipleship is. I'm passionate about that. My heart, you know, my heart beats there. I long for each and every one of us to continue to grow in our hunger for God, our hunger and our desire for Jesus, the things of God, his kingdom. I pray that we become more and more and more awake to God's spirit as it breaks into our life each and every day. I believe God's spirit is around us each day, breaking in around us. I think we miss it a lot of times, but I just pray we become more awake to that. And why do I want us to grow there? Why do I believe this? Because I believe with everything within me that Jesus can be the difference maker in your life. I believe that. And the truth is this, I don't want you to miss out on all that God has for you. I don't want you to miss out on that. So I've been and I will be praying that you become more and more aware of the possibilities and the promises that come along with this life of faith in following Jesus. And I'm praying that your faith becomes the foundation, the defining mark of who you are and that you live out of that to the fullness that God has for you. Let me pray. God, I thank you for this great gift of life that you offer to each one of us. just have this vision just come to mind right now of you standing with your hands open offering us a life that's beyond anything that we can ever hope or imagine and you're just saying to your children just come and take and receive and walk in the fullness and the freedom that I have and desire for you as your father your good good father He's saying, you can trust me. Let go of those things the world has told you matter the most that you've been clinging to and holding on to to find worth and value in your life and come to me and allow me to define that for you so you can walk in the fullness that I have for you. So God, we just pray today that we would be that kind of people that we would freely receive this gift that you have for us, and we would come to know the fullness of the life that you have, that you have and you want to share with us. So Holy Spirit, unlock that within us. Begin to unleash that in us, the power of that life, so that we can be your people, redeemed by your blood, walking in the freedom for the sake of others in your kingdom. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.